Hi, everybody. Uh, this is Dr. Wright, and I'm here to talk to you about lipedema and lymphedema. And these, uh, there's a lot, mo there's a lot of overlap, but uh, they are different diseases, and most people don't understand the differences. And so, I'm going to go in to a deep dive into lipedema and lymphedema, and hopefully, um, that help everybody understand the differences and similarities between them. So. Uh, without much ado, uh, here here goes. Uh, so what is lipedema? Lipedema is a fat disease. Um, it's relatively resistant to weight loss, is associated with high output lymphatic failure. So it does have some lymphatic um, lymphatic impairment, um, uh, but but the uh, lymphs, lymph is pumping. Um, it it is uh, characterized by uh, 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 so there is fibrosis in it, but it's just in the, uh, in the, in the subcutaneous, uh, deeper tissue, not in the upper dermis. And, um, it uh, obviously, uh, is symmetrical and affects, uh, uh, just women. Um, and it just, um, uh, is, is mostly known for its, uh, uh accumulation on the limbs. Lymphedema is, uh, so lymphedema occurs when there's a disruption of lymphatic flow because of obstruction or absence of flux of structures. It affects the whole dermis. Uh, there's fibrosis in the upper dermis, not just the subdermis. Uh, it's associated with uh, various complications, including infection. And um, Many people think of just lymphedema in terms of uh, from cancer, or, but it's actually the most common cause of, of lymphedema right now is obesity, actually. And then uh, venous, venous uh, problems uh, such as blood clots and, and uh, uh, venous obstruction can also cause lymphedema is a very common cause of that. Um, and it's also associated with trauma and especially like knee, knee replacements can lead to lymphedema. So um, lymphedema, uh, we'll get into more of this in just a little bit. So prevalence, lipedema is a, uh, it's, it's hard to know. It's estimated that it's, uh, occurs in about 11% of the female population. Um, it, it, you know, estimates range from, uh, five to 20%. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, we don't have a good, um, a good, um, uh, estimate, but those are the, that's what we, that's what we, uh, that's what we have right now. Lymphedema, uh, is epidemic worldwide. Um, um, over 250 million people are affected. Um, it's about in the U.S. It's about one in a thousand people have uh, lymphedema, um, and it can be caused. Uh, uh, again, um, um, uh, one of the biggest causes right now in the U.S. is uh, secondary to obesity. Um, so once once your uh, BMI gets in uh in the 40s and 50s or um you know that 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 puts so much pressure on your lymphatics that it can cause a secondary lymphedema uh so this is this is a diagram of how the lymphatic system works and it's important to understand um so most people understand the uh, arterial venous circulation that's a closed system and um, as you can see here it starts the heart pumps through uh, uh, the arteries to the veins and then uh, returns back to the heart. Um, but uh, lymph is an open system. So it it, um, it starts uh, in the tissues. It's, it's generated uh, from the fluid that leaks out of the capillaries and then it, it, it's in the open into the tissues. And then it, it, it then is collected up into lymphatic collectors and then they they take it to the lymph nodes and then filter it and um, and then it, it, the, some of the fluid is returned into the um, into circulation. Uh, so this is this is sort of a schematic of these lymphatic capillaries, and then they go to the bigger collectors, and and that's that's uh, that that helps us uh, uh, appreciate uh, lymphatic circulation. Um. So lipedema affects uh, can, affects mobility, can cause disability because of uh, inability to do activities, climbing stairs, getting in and out of tubs, et cetera, uh, getting out of chairs. Secondary, it can cause a secondary lymphedema. It can cause um, it can lead to orthopedic 
changes, including arthritis in the knee, hip, and ankles. Um, so it can it can it can impair um, and, and the um, everybody's quality of life and and even lead to disability and uh, increase the risk of even mortality. Which I'm just in another in another uh, paper I'm just publishing now. I, I, I'm able to show links that how it could it, it can indirectly correlate with uh, overall um, mortality. So lymphedema um, uh, uh, also causes immobility um, and it is a, a, a leading cause of disability. It also uh, because the uh, Lymphatics are impaired. It increases the risk of infection and even cancer in the areas that where the lymphedema occurs. So, in a limb, a leg uh, with lymphedema has an increased risk of developing cancer, and, and and part of that's because of the immune compromise in the area of where the lymph lymphedema is going on. So, that lymphatic circulation is not just it's not just moving fluid. It's it's actually um, part of our um, immune system and it, it is how we fight infections and heal. And so, uh, so impairment of lymphatics is serious. This is a picture of lipedema. So, so uh, there's a classic lady uh, who has what we call type three lipedema. You can see here that there's columning over the legs. That means the, there's like a, like the, a, a column of tissue over the legs. Uh, actually uh, uh, hanging, even the, the thigh tissue actually hangs over the knees and um, see kind of a lobule at the knee and then cuffs down at the uh, ankle. Um, and so this is a classic um, lady with lipedema and the changes. Now you can see here her uh, her foot, her, she has the cuffs and she has no, her feet are spared and that's kind of classic for the diagnosis lipedema. So if you, uh, the, the swelling and stuff is limited to the ankles and above. And this is a, a, another lady, this is a, a stage up called stage three. And, um, and you can see here that she's developed lobules. Um, so these are just like excursions of fat and uh, on her, um, on her lateral thighs and kind of even kind of a lobule on her calf. And um, and then she's got lobules on her arms and, 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 um, they, they can be quite, um, <clears throat> quite bothersome, um, and interfere with, um, activities and they're heavy. This is lymphedema. So this is a lady with, uh, this is advanced bilateral lymphedema and you could, she has, um, uh, you know, she has cuffs and lobules, but you can see here it, it, the swelling extends into the feet. Um, and then you can see their skin changes. So she has what we, so you can see the rippling on there. That's fibrosis of the skin and leading to this, these ridges. And um, so it's, it's all the way through into the dermis. Um, and now she does also have, she has uh, uh, these uh, large lobules of uh, swollen tissue. And that is in, in the thighs as well. This is a more classic sign of lymphedema. This is just involving one foot. And the other foot is uninvolved, and and so uh, if you pinch the top of that, you, it won't, it, the skin won't pinch, and that's that's what we call a, a positive stemmer sign, and that's classic for uh, lymphedema. So physical signs, I kind of went over the cuffs. While they occur in both, they're they're more more known for in lipedema, um, lobules, uh, negative stemmer sign, progressive. The stem, stemmer sign is negative and uh, the progressive mobility issues. And then the lymphedema, um, the stemmer sign is, is, is uh, almost always positive. The skin changes through, including the fibrosis and, 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 and the progressive enlargement. You, and it usually lymphedema is often in one limb um, or um, and is generally asymmetric so even even if it does affect both limbs it's one limb is usually affected more uh treatment both lymphedema are treated with compression um, a a low low carb diet um, which uh in lymphedema therapy complete decongestive and then intermittent compression pumps and and, and um so those those are the mainstays of treatment so there there's 
there there is a lot of overlap or similarities between the two uh, treatments. Uh, lipedema. Um, um, so lipedema is very responsive to lipedema reduction surgery. It's one of the most su uh, successful uh, things. Uh, successful treatments are most um, can give some of the biggest benefits. Um, it should be done for people who have who who have um, done conservative therapy um, and and uh, still need relief. Um, uh, so studies have shown that the li lipedema reduction surgery um, can improve pain, swelling, decrease knee compression. We also can do a reduction surgery in lymphedema, but um, that's um, that's not is often done, and and most of the time uh, lymphedema is just managed with non-surgically with uh, compression. This is a. <clears throat> Uh, before and after uh, on the left is before uh, lipidema reduction surgery. And uh, and you can see here, there's uh, um, quite a bit of tissue is removed and and uh, and uh, she this improved her mobility, quality of life with lipidema. She had uh, type type three, stage three lipidema with lobules and the um, and uh, and it was it was impairing her mobility mobility improved significantly after after the surgery and her overall quality of life improved this is just um before and after showing uh like one of these lobules uh, on the inner knee before and after surgery and uh and even that even that can just even removing that lobule can improve the knee flexion and range of motion and mobility so and as well as they can be very heavy and tender and, and that reducing that lobule uh, uh, gave her great relief. This is a, this is a side view uh, before and after, and you can see there's this colony of, of lipedema tissue over the, th over the knee. And then after the surgery that's reduced and that, that can help the mobility and pain and symptoms of lipedema. Um, and here's, here's a lipid, here's an arm uh, with a, affected by lipedema before and after lipedema reduction surgery. So uh, I, I spoke about how it can improve um, knee range of motion, uh, valgus, and, and what, again, I'm uh, just getting ready to publish a, uh, some data on that and how um, it can improve the knee flexion, um, gait, and alignment of the uh, knee. So Following uh, lipidema reduction surgery, we s saw an improvement in knee flexion by um, eight to nine degrees, um, and, a, and, a, and a significant improvement in the in in the uh, gait. Um, these these uh, improvements in knee flexion and um, are and gait are are quite quite uh, striking and, and are, are, are similar uh, to compared to what we see in knee surgery. I'll get into that a little more. This is kind of, this is, a, this is how we measure knee flexion. This is uh, called a goniometer and we uh, uh, line it up with the femur and the fibula. And, and uh, this is a lipedema lady who you can see there's a lot of tissue uh, in the thigh and calf that are preventing the full flexion. So she's at around nine, a little under 90 degrees of flexion, and that's way below normal. And, and as I showed you earlier, that affects uh, uh, things that, you know, so at that, at, at this kind of flexion, it's difficult to go up and down stairs and, and, and difficult to get in and out of cars, et cetera. And then this is uh, the green area here is where it should be. And that would be, you know, more, that would be like 140 degrees, which would be a normal knee flexion, and 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 that would be um, and that's kind of our goal for our lipedema ladies is to 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 get them as close to normal as possible in their in their flexion and mobility. So we we studied this and we looked at these um, patient patient medical out patient reported medical outcomes, and that's. Um, the promise and Rand and they, and uh, they were developed by the NA, NIH and the and the uh, Rand Corporation Corporation and they are um, they're used widely they're 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 uh, they're they're normalized to uh, the 
U.S. population, and they also are used in many other uh, diseases. So we can compare the improvements we see uh, from lipedema reduction surgery with um, with uh, improvements seen with other uh, surgeries for other diseases. So um, Rand, um, the, so this is the the SF thirty six. So um, uh, uh, medical outcomes, and we can see on all sorts of um, components of overall health, such as physical functioning, neural functioning, energy, fatigue, emotional well-being, social functioning, pain, and general health, they all started well below mean and some uh, improved to above the mean or or or, um, or, or just just below it. Uh, um, and that that's uh, those are all statistically significant. This is that same data just showing there's a you know just graphed uh, and 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 then we can see here you know over each of these uh, domains of of health that there's uh, um, you know improvements after the surgery. Here is some of the promise data, and we we see here that the um, that there's a 15% uh, increase in the ability to walk at normal speed, and that is that is a that is significant. Um, that's statistically significant, but it also is significant in terms of this, like normal uh, normal gait speed is associated with um, a lot of measures of health, and uh, declining gait speed is associated with disability and even even uh, future mortality. Um, similarly, we saw an 18% improvement in the ability to go up and down stairs. And that stair ascent and descent is another key indicator for overall health, uh, mobility, and uh, predictor of future disability ver and, and even mortality. Um, and then uh, we also um, you know, showed significant improvement in ability to get up, uh, up uh, from a chair. And all, all these things are... Um, um, are very um, show uh, uh, very very significant improvements in uh, uh, important measures of overall health. So when we compare lipedema reduction surgery to uh, a total knee arthroplasty or knee replacement, um, these are our our data are our. our from the lipedema reduction surgery are, are every bit as good. Um, we are showing um, uh, similar improvements in overall mobility, overall quality of life and activities of daily living uh, using the same, the exact same uh, validated measured tools um, have comparable, uh, comparable mechanical improvements in, 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 knee uh, flexion, uh, comparable um, improvements in quality of life and and uh, and and these are these are quite quite striking and, and really uh, um, are, are able to show that this surgery is uh, can can have as impact the same kind of impact in someone's health as a, a, a knee replacement. Well, that is all my time, and I really appreciate you, uh, uh, your interest. And uh, if you have any questions about this or anything, please put them in the comments. I really, um, I, I'll, I'll, I'll take some time to answer them, and I hope this is helpful to, um, you know, the, the people. And again, thank you again for for uh, listening and 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 uh, um, wishing you all the best of health. So goodbye.